let me tell you what's going on in Atlanta. Right now, there's a lot of things. Like crime is through the roof. And I want to give you some examples. Um, I live in Sandy Springs, which became a city in 2005. Years and years ago, I used to work at Northside Hospital, which is in Sandy Springs. So there used to be Sandy Springs Police, Fulton County Police, and I think Roswell, they, they kind of overlapped. And the city of Sandy Springs started this campaign to succeed from Fulton County. And they were successful. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, there is more money in Sandy Springs, just Sandy Springs alone, more money than in most of Fulton County. So that was one of the big driving forces for this succession. There's a lot of money in Sandy Springs. I mean, a phenomenal amount of money. Essentially, uh, I think Alpharetta, I have to Google that, is trying to do the same thing because what was happening was the money from Sandy Springs and Alpharetta was going to South Fulton because literally the city of Sandy Springs, just the city of Sandy Springs, has more money than a lot of counties. Now, why is that? Remember, I was telling you guys about zip code 30327, wealthiest zip code in the southeast outside of a few zip codes in Florida, right? Well, that zip code is partially in Sandy Springs and is partially in Fulton County in the city of Atlanta. And there's this been ongoing debate because um, I saw this on next door and this lady posted, I'm probably gonna post it in my community section because I know I screenshot it. Our senior manager cannot stay in Buckhead because Buckhead has become so inhospitable. And one of the things that the money, the rich folks of Atlanta are doing is cleaning up their habitat. Like Sandy Springs. There are, if you had a liquor store in 2005 or a car dealership in 2005, you were able to get grandfathered in, but you cannot start a new car dealership. They banned, all three strip clubs that were in Sandy Springs closed. All three of them closed. So you, you know, they, they are doing a certain type of municipal architecture. And this is what the people in North Buckhead, which is, right on the line of Sandy Springs. Because the people in North Buckhead saw what Sandy Springs did. Sandy Springs got their own police force, got their own fire department. They had the money to create these services. They're, they had the money. So essentially when their money stopped going to South Fulton, they were able to take their money and improve their area. Like they just tore down a fire station. That used to be a fire station right there, right? They're getting ready to build a municipal complex. There are billions of dollars in Sandy Springs. Billion in just Sandy Springs alone. And Sandy Springs is next to Dunwoody. And the lady who posted on next door talking about our senior leadership, we're gonna have them to start to stay in Dunwoody. They're getting, they're, what they're doing is shaping the city through political policy and money. Because Dunwoody is kind of like Sandy Springs, but it's not. Dunwoody has money. Dunwoody has old money, but Sandy Springs has more money, old and new money. Because parts of Sandy Springs, and it's, it's a real interesting thing, because I've been noticing this since I've lived here, Sandy Springs bumps up against East Cobb. East Cobb is a lot of money. And Sandy Springs bumps up against Northside Drive. Parts of Northside Drive are in Sandy Springs, and Northside Drive goes through Sandy Springs, Fulton County, into, I think it starts by the AU Center. So what they're trying to do 
is shape public policy and shape the future. And I think a lot of people are watching what's happening here in Georgia because one of the things that has happened, and let's talk about what happened to Buckhead. Buckhead used to be very, very white. Buckhead, you could just go ahead and put the B in Buckhead is for black now. And I'm gonna talk about how Buckhead changed its demographics. You know what started the big change in Buckhead? Black gay men. You had two black gay men who were often in STEM careers, dual income, no kids. They had money. They could afford to buy a house in Buckhead or Sandy Springs. They could afford to rent an expensive apartment in Buckhead or Sandy Springs. And these people were, they, they started to transition Lenox Mall because I noticed that I used to be able to go to Lenox Mall and you will always see a, a bunch of young black kids. Always. Because, you know, that's where the shoe stores are. That's where the stores are. That, but I began to notice there was a ton of gay black men. I mean, a ton. And then I started to notice the white gay men. And then, I, you know, and they literally took over Lenox Mall. Literally took it over. And then they started to shape Buckhead. Buckhead, because gay, because the gay guys used to own and run Midtown. Midtown used to be extremely gay. There was uh, incidents of gay men in Piedmont Park having sex in the park. This was a thing. Uh, Mid, uh, Midtown is where the Claremont Lounge is. So what has happened is Midtown and Buckhead have kind of flipped. The gay people are still in Midtown, but Midtown is more open to everybody versus just gay men. And I'm thinking about moving to Midtown. Midtown has changed dramatically. It has flipped because what I'm seeing, you know, living here and just looking, because I looked at a penthouse in Buckhead and I'm not living in that building. Not from what I saw, not with the environment. And you have a big flipping because gay black men, gay white men run Buckhead right now. They're running Buckhead. And there's still a lot of money in Buckhead. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of industry. There's a lot of commerce in Buckhead. And that's not going to change because it's centrally located. But what has happened to Buckhead is there's a lot of well-paid black folks, many of them young, who've moved to Buckhead. And they've literally flipped it because I looked at the same building that I looked at the penthouse. I looked at it in 2012. This happened in 10 years. This happened in 10 years. The big switch, the big flip. And crime is begun crazy because uh, I was looking, my next door is just full of posts about crime. This woman posted that her boyfriend was getting gas and a white man, and they always use race. They always use race, white man, black man, whatever. And a white man jumped into her boyfriend's car and started pressing buttons. And her boyfriend, he had the key in his pocket and he, he was yelling at the guy, get out of my car. So what is going on is you gotta understand, people with money are used to being treated a certain way. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was in Lifetime Gym, and one of the trainers kind of flipped out on me, right? You know what my next move was? I quit my membership at Life Gym instantly. Because, see, when you have money and you have the, the power and access of privilege, you're, you're just not used to being treated. So these white folks are mad. They're mad. They're, they're pissed off. Because essentially, once again, on the line, because th parts of 30327 are in Sandy Springs, and part of that is in the city of Atlanta, and I consistently see people leaving these comments, and these are not 
normal white folks. These are millionaires. These are millionaires living in mansions. And what I've noticed is they will start a political action committee and they will get some stuff done. I've seen this. I'm like city of Sandy Springs. I remember when they were talking about it, uh, the, the mayor of Sandy Springs, the first mayor of Sandy Springs was a woman and she was one of the people. And I, I haven't even Googled her, but I have a feeling that she comes from old money. Cause see, when you have old money, <clears throat> it runs a city and uh, then they want to facilitate change in the city. They will facilitate change. They will facilitate change. They're not going to put up with this crap. And I guarantee you, once these people get pissed off enough, they're going to clean up Buckhead. Because they want they want Buckhead back. They want Buckhead, because like I said, Buckhead used to be very, very white. There was a term, Buckhead Betty. This was a white woman who was married to an affluent man in Buckhead and she didn't work and she just shopped and had lunch with her friends. That was a Buckhead Betty. And I have a friend who's a black girl and she became a Buckhead Betty. She married this white attorney who came from money. His grandfather uh, knew Far, Far Road, that's a person his grandfather and Far had some kind of company together, and this man has come from five generations of money. And he married this little black girl who, incidentally, is very petite, very feminine, very girly. And he married her, and the family loved her because she's a sweet person. And she became a Buckhead Betty. She became one of those rich Buckhead Betty housewives. And she was telling me that they noticed that the neighborhood was changed. Cause like, uh, I may do some rich folks of Atlanta videos, just taking you through the neighborhood and just showing you the landscape. But essentially what you're seeing in the camp and the governor's mansion is off West Paces Ferry Road. So Kemp lives in the neighborhood. Governor Kemp lives in the neighborhood and they're starting to talk and they're starting to create action because Here's the thing. Many of the young black folks in Buckhead are professional. They're making money because they have to make money because the, the rent ain't cheap. The rent ain't cheap. So they got to be making money. They got to be making three times rent to qualify. So they're making money. They're professionals, but they're very, very urban. And they smoke a lot of weed. This is kind of funny. Uh, the Uber driver I had yesterday, she sent me a mess message it's like, if you smell like me, weed, please cancel. <laughs> and I was just sitting there like, so when I was looking at this penthouse, I noticed that um, there was weed in the hallways and that was just a sign that young, you know, not always black, but young folks there smoking weed and it was the middle of the day. So what, what kind of jobs do these folks have? What kind of work are they doing, right? So what you're going to see Governor Kemp's weighed in Keisha Bottoms uh, essentially the Atlanta police force is short 1,000 police officers which is one of the reasons that crime is so bad because they can only take the most serious phone calls like you know BS like you know little BS little brick, they, they call and do a report over the phone because they don't have enough police officers because I, I will tell you I noticed this change right where the city of Atlanta, because um, it's very close to where I live. There's a, a, a cutoff point at Chase Bank on Roswell Road, heading into Buckhead. The police used to sit there, the Atlanta police used to sit there, because see, there's this hill and people would be speeding down this hill and it was like a speed trap. I have not seen a cop in that area in about two years. Now, once again, you got a speed trap in a wealthy neighborhood, which is instant cash flow. You don't have enough cops to run that speed trap, which was generating revenue. Once again, they were generating revenue for the city of Atlanta. 
I've not seen a cop in month, in two years. Two years, maybe three, because I, I just thought about that. And I was like, how come these cops are gone? So what you're going to see is a lot of action. And they're going to try to clean up Buckhead because Buckhead is right next to Sandy Springs. And here's the thing with Sandy Springs. It's like living in the suburbs, but being close to the city. You can live in Sandy Springs and work at one of these Fortune 500 companies because their headquarters, Sandy Springs, UPS, um, I don't I don't know all of the Fortune 500, but I know UPS is headquartered in Sandy Springs. And there's massive, massive corporations in the King and Queen building, these two, the Twin Towers off 285. So you can live here, live well, like you're living in the suburbs. If you got the money, you can buy a house with two acres. That's gonna cost you a mil to three mil just walking in walking in my neighborhood a house just sold for 975 that one before that one sold one sold for 923 so these houses are sitting on 1 to 2 acres and uh they're they're snapping them up they're they're snapping them up they're moving really quick and what's funny before the pandemic uh on Long Island which is around the corner from me there were several houses that were on the market for over a year and now they're moving, they're moving, they're moving. Because essentially, people are moving from the suburbs back to the city. Let me say that again. People are moving from the suburbs back to the city. Um, there's one building I got to look at that looks promising. Uh, it's in Buckhead. But once again, I you know, the building, I'm judging the whole building. You know, when I walk in... I judge the staff. I judge um, the people that I see, the residents. Because if I see a whole bunch of young black folks, I ain't moving there. I am too old for the foolishness. I cannot deal with the foolishness. You know, I, I just can't. Bunch of weed smoking, bunch of loud talking, bunch of craziness. Because see, even though a lot of these young professional black folks have money, they still ghetto. And one of the things that I've seen is the number of shootings that are happening in Buckhead. And this is a big problem because now going back to that post of the lady where our senior management cannot stay in Buckhead hotels because of the foolishness, because what you have is a lot of YouTubers and Instagrammers living in Buckhead. So you already know what that lifestyle is about how they getting down. And once again, these white people are pissed off. And one of the things that, one of the most powerful forces on the planet is pissed off white people with money. That gets shit done. Pissed off white people with money. And I've been listening and I've been listening and they've been talking about Keisha because parts of Sandy Springs are in the city of Atlanta. And the city of Atlanta ain't that big. It really ain't. The city of Atlanta is not that big. Metropolitan Atlanta is massive. Uh, I think Georgia has like 12 million residents and like 6 or 7 million live in Metro Atlanta and then everyone else it just spreads out. But you're going to see some change because just like city of sandy springs they got rid of the strip clubs you cannot start a liquor store you cannot open up an auto, auto dealership they cleaned up this neighborhood they got rid of the strip clubs so if you're trying to start a non-approved business they will not give you a business license because they want to keep their city a certain way and essentially you know let's talk about the demographics of sandy springs the women out here are married. If you are a woman living in my neighborhood, 30327, nine times out of 10, you married or your husband died. 
There are very, very few single women in my neighborhood. Very, very few. You want to know why? They can't afford to live there. Single woman can't afford to live there. And also, um, I am kind of downsizing because essentially I have three levels. And I just primarily hang out 99% 99, 99 on the main level. So I, I can actually go down to 1,500 feet, 1,500 square feet. It'll be pretty much the same as it is now because that's pretty much all I use. And one of the things is these houses are just too big for a single person. There's a lady that lives at the front of my community and she, her husband used to be the announcer for the Braves. I think his name was Skip Carey. And this is his widow because he, he passed on. And she lives in a massive house and she's got family living with her because the house the house is probably 2,000 square feet bigger than my house and my house is 5,000 square feet. So that's a lot of house just for one person. And you, you know, the demographics of Sandy Springs is families. It's families. Uh, the people I got the house from, they have three kids. So that's a five member household. And you will see that over and over and over again. Rich people are having two, three, four, five kids. That's a sign of their wealth because you got three kids. Mama ain't going to work no job. Come on. Unless mom is making 250, 300,000. And there are some high power chicks out here who do that. Uh, my new neighbors, he works and she works. And I, she is some kind of VP and he's some kind of VP. And they have two kids. But she making like two, 300K. And he making two, 300K. So the kind of money she's making, you know, daycare is easily paid and there's a lot of money left over. So that, that works for them. But for many of these women in this neighborhood, they don't work. They don't work. When I moved into the neighborhood and at the time I was in a relationship with my girlfriend and the women, because when, when she met some of the neighbors and it's like, you work? They were like, really? That's cute. You work? <laughs> You work, really? That's so cute. You work? I don't work. I haven't worked in 20 years. I had worked in 30 years. My job is to be my husband's wife. That's my job. And once again, this is where the activity stuff. Because see, you got a husband who works and you got a wife who stays at home. Guess who's running these political action committees? The women. Why? Because they have the time. They have the time to have meetings during the day. They have the time to do fundraisers. They have the time because they got a well-paid husband. There's this one woman, and I, I stalk her next door page because her husband's an attorney, and she's got this business. She's doing all kinds of stuff, and she's always come in on next door, always. And I've noticed that these women out here have a lot of free time to do whatever they want to do. So this is going to be the nucleus of this new movement because just like they cleaned up Sandy Springs, Sandy Springs had like three strip clubs. Let me tell you about the strip club. There was one strip club that was kind of ghetto. There was one strip club that guys and dolls, one side was girls, one side was guys. They got rid of that. And I'm actually surprised that they still have Johnny's Holloway. Well, Johnny Holloway, they just play old music and people dance. Uh, that's not a surprise. But just like the city of Sandy Springs cleaned up all of the riffraff, they're going to do it in Buckhead. When I was in the 90s in Buckhead, right now where all of this new development is, there used to be nightclubs. They got rid of all those nightclubs. And they changed the ordinance where they, these clubs could not be open at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. I think they had to close at 1. So just like they got rid of those nightclubs out of Buckhead, because these white people are pissed off. And they, they're, it's, it's, they're reached a, they reached a point where the straw that broke the camel's back. I think that that's where we are. And you're going to see a lot of action. Kemp's weighing in. 
you're seeing a lot. Uh, Keisha, we're going to spend 70 million to fight because crime has gone through the roof. You want to know why? Because pandemic, people sitting at home, people ain't got no money, people are trying to come up, people doing whatever they're doing, right? So you're going to see, I predict they're going to clean Buckhead up in five years because they want their city, they want their Buckhead back. Like I said, 10 years ago, Buckhead was very white. It was very rich. And this is when the gays, the black gays, the white gays started to come in. And they literally started to transform the neighborhood. And once again, since the, the black gays and the white gays had money, they were not a problem. Because if you've ever lived next to a gay couple, and I've lived next to a gay couple, like, and especially if they're older, they don't really do nothing. They just stay around the house. They do the garden. They do the yard work. They, they, they settled. Older gay couples are really, really settled. They actually are a benefit to the neighborhood. So they are not the problem. The gays are not the problem. What they want to do is rid Buckhead of the young black ghetto people. And I know many of you are going to like, man, how you, you know, they're ghetto. They're ghetto. Funny thing. I got um, a new vehicle. I'm going to do a girl tried to rent it on hire car because I haven't changed the price. And I was just like, you, you're not getting that for that price. You're not getting that. And I'm like, she was one of the people that I talk about in the Kill Switch Chronicles. Two day rental. This is how it starts, right? And I'm just sitting there like, I'm going to call hire car and change that price when they're open. And then, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to send her a message because she ain't going to like the new price because the new price is almost double what it is now. Um, but I predict that they're going to clean Buckhead up in about five years and they're going to make it inhospitable for these young black ghetto people because what's happening is you have a lot of the young black folks who are working these corporate jobs and they're code switching. When they go to work, they know how to speak, they know how to act, they know how to talk. When they come home, they smoking weed, they're playing music, they're being themselves. So they're one way at work to get these high paying corporate jobs and they're another way at home. And the way that, now this would not be a problem if they behaved the same way that they behaved at work, at home, there would not be a problem. But essentially these folks be wilding out be wilding out. When I went to look at this penthouse, there was five of them in the parking lot smoking weed and they had um, three BMWs, an X5, the tailgate was open, they were playing music. Once again, they were just chilling in the parking lot with their three cars, their music, smoking weed. That did not happen in Buckhead 12 years ago. And that's the problem. Because you know, if they were to just relax like that inside their home, but see that that tells you how comfortable they are, that they're going to have three cars in the parking lot, tailgate up, playing the music loud, smoking weed in public. It tells you that's the kind of behavior that they're trying to get rid of. Because I'm going to be straight up. I don't want to be around that. I don't smoke weed. You know? Uh, I, 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 my girlfriend smokes weed and I, I'll buy her some weed but essentially she smokes weed like twice a month three times a month something like that it ain't every day and um, I don't want to be around that I don't want to be around people smoking weed in the parking lot with the music blaring and they just talking loud and you know dapping each other up and all this I, I don't want to be around that and essentially that's the element that they're going to try to clean up and I feel, because they got time, effort, and money in the law, I would not be surprised if you see a law saying it will be illegal to be in the parking lot. Well, it's already illegal to be smoking weed. It's already illegal. But, um, yeah, these people are pissed off. I, I should start posting screenshots of what I see in the conversations that they have. Because, um, Car thefts, carjackings, all these things are going on out here. Um, 
And I'm telling you, the rich people of Atlanta, the white folks with the money, are pissed off and they're going about to facilitate some changes. Like I said, um, they got rid of the nightclubs in Buckhead and give them some time to figure out a way. I, what I feel is they're going to price them out because that's what worked in Sandy Springs. You can't live in Sandy Springs unless you make some money. You just can't. I mean, even like a two bedroom apartment out here is 1500 to 3000 And like I said, the cheapest house in my neighborhood is 900 and the most expensive house is probably 1.5. They're gonna, that, I think that that's what they're gonna move toward is pricing people out, making it where these people cannot afford to live there. I feel that that's gonna be the next wave because uh, essentially the penthouse I was looking at was 5,000 a month. And actually I moved my budget to 10. You wanna know why? Because if I'm paying 10,000 and everyone else is paying 10,000, you're not going to have the riffraff. You're not going to have the, the clowning. You're Because they can't afford it. They can't afford it. That is one of the economic moats that rich people use to separate themselves from the riffraff of society. It's pricing people out. And I feel that that's going to be the move. I feel that that's going to be the move. They're building some new construction. They got some new things going on. I feel that that's going to be the move to price these people out, to make Buckhead so expensive that they cannot live there. Because when, you, when you're making two, 250, 300,000, you're working. Don't be, don't be mistaken, unless you are a small business owner, that you've got a business that's making you that kind of money and you have systems and employees in place where you can chill. Okay, but if you're an employee making that kind of money, they're getting their pound of flesh. And I feel that they're going to price it to draw those kind of people because when you work like that, you're not rowdy. When you off, you just chill. You just chill. So I feel that they're going to try to price these people out, create an economic moat to push these folks out and to clean up Buckhead because Buckhead has a lot of shootings. Buckhead has a lot of crime. And like I said, the white folks, I believe, have reached a tipping point where they're about to facilitate a lot of change in the next five years. And just like Sandy Springs is the template, they looked at what Sandy Springs did. There is not a ghetto in Sandy Springs. There was a perfectly fine apartment complex, but it was low income. You know what they did? They knocked it down and they built million dollar Five hundred thousand dollar houses in that on that spot, and I've seen it. They've been doing this left and right. So there's very, very little low income housing in Sandy Springs. There's a few spots. There's a few um, townhouses. Townhouses here typically are four something to five something, but I've noticed that they have through economic policy. And through construction and code, code enforcement, because they had to rewrite the code to knock down that apartment building and then put this other thing up. They had to rewrite that code. So I feel that Sandy Springs is the litmus test, the template for what they're going to do in the rest of Buckhead. Because everyone's looking at like Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs was never a rowdy place, but it did have some ghettos. They cleaned up all the ghettos. There's no ghettos in Sandy Springs right now. And in this whole area, Sandy Springs, Buckhead, wrapping around the Northside Drive, going to um, East Cobb, there's no ghettos. There's no ghettos. That is by design. That is by design. This was intentional. And you're gonna see that type of intentionality come up to Buckhead because who doesn't like, I mean, one of the reasons I'm moving is I just kind of want to experience high rise living. It's just a thing for me, right? But more than likely, I'm probably going to come back here and buy a house because you, it's like, like I said, I've said this before. It's like living in the suburbs 
with close access to the city. Because like where I live, okay, I can get to the Brave Stadium in 12 minutes. I can get to the Mercedes-Benz Dome in 15 if I just roll down Northside Drive. I can get there 15, 20 minutes. So I can get to all the happening spots in less than 20 minutes, yet I walk out and I have two acres. Who wouldn't want that? It's like living in the suburbs, but being very close to the city. Now it's about a 30 minute drive to the airport from where I'm at, about 30, 35 minutes. So I am pretty close to all of the happening spots Atlanta Falcon games, if I was a baseball fan, baseball games, um, like I said, 20 minutes from downtown. So I'm not having to drive all over creation. Like I have two cars and collectively last year, I put 10,000 miles on both cars, 5,000. So, and I drive every day. I go somewhere every day, but I don't have to go far. I'm not running all over the city. So I feel that to live like that is going to, you know, I think the prices are going to go up dramatically in Buckhead, Sandy Springs. Um, I, I see that happening. I really see that happening. So, yeah, this is what's going on in Georgia from someone who lives here, who's seen all these changes, seen how they architect the, the municipal architecture of Sandy Springs. And that's going to be the template they're going to use for the city of Atlanta. It's going to be the template. The city of Atlanta is going to be kind of hard. It's going to be kind of hard. Uh, the city of Atlanta has too many impoverished areas. See, this is why the German, the architecture, like Sandy Springs, Northside Drive, East Cobb, there's a homogenous demographic of well-off people. There's no ghettos, there's no cheap apartments. Essentially, where I live, you go to Hertz Ferry, you go, there are no apartment complexes. You have to go to Cobb County, and I'm right on the line. Like, it takes me like five minutes on highway, I'm in Cobb County. There are apartment complexes in Cobb County, but on Northside Drive, and um, there are none. This is by design. This is by design. Because also something else, and this, this may be significant or insignificant to you, but I don't really have traffic in my neighborhood. You wanna know why? Because it's not dense. There's not high density. When I'm in my neighborhood tooting around, I rarely run into traffic. 285, that's a different story. And Roswell Road, that's a different story. But running around here, because it's not, because you got all these big houses sitting on acre, an acre or acres. So there's less people out here. Whereas you roll in, you go to Buckhead, it starts getting really dense. Houses start getting smaller, but the price essentially in this little weird area, and I might do a little drive by on it. Uh, these houses are older, but they're crazy expensive. Like a three and two ranch, 750 to 800,000. A 1500 square foot house, 750 to maybe a million maybe a million in this area because the closer you move to Buckhead, the more expensive the houses get. And I feel in the future, the houses are going to get way, way more expensive, like crazy expensive. Some of these houses I'm talking about are going to be a million five. This is coming. This is coming because this is the economic moat that the wealthy have used time and time again to separate themselves from the social riffraff of society. All right, so let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I will talk to you in the next one. Oh, yeah, also, uh, I'm doing a pre-sale for the corporate papers because essentially, you know, right now, I got to do some stuff with these cars. Um, I'm going to start creating content and training on the weekends so, you know, you can get in. If you go ahead and buy, I'm going to do a special thing for my students. The price of consults are going up to 2500 but for my students, the consults would be 500, but you have to be a student. And essentially everyone who buys and pays up in full, you will have access to the consults. If you're on the payment plan, you will not have access to the consults until you finish paying off. And then I'm probably going to give you access to the con consults for a year. 
So a year after you buy the corporate toolbox, the corporate papers, and you want to get on the phone and talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, it'll be 500 bucks. And we're going to do a lot of different stuff, a lot of special stuff. I'm going to work on that today. So that's all I got for you guys. Links are below, and I will see you in the next one.